Welcome to 321 exam. I'm going to be your physics tutor today, and the topic we'll be looking at is capacitor. You know, capacitor is an electronic device that helps in storing charges. It is something I believe that very many of you out there would have seen or you would have make uses of without knowing. What do I mean? You have a charger, you have a phone at home, that on a good day, hey, mommy, my bar is down, my phone bars, meaning your battery is actually running out. So you need to boost the energy level of the battery in the phone. So that particular charger that you plug in, the charger itself, we have a capacitor there that helps does the job of charging your phone very comfortably. But there is one thing you must take note of. It gets to a stage, it has a maximum limit where you will say, ah, mom, my phone is filled up. It depends on the type of phone you are using, okay? Such that once the phone is filled up, you will see it, battery fully charged, 100%. Then you have to disconnect at that point in time. If you don't disconnect, there are implications. And one of such implications is to reduce the lifespan of the battery in itself. And I want to believe that is not the essence of charging the phone. So when that happens, what am I saying here? When it is indicated 100% in the phone, okay, and you refuse to disconnect your phone from charging or from the point source, it is now called overcharging. So an overcharging kills the lifespan of the battery. That is all, okay? And you know it is not economical. Another disadvantage, it is not economical at all, okay? And um, most probably it is not cost effective. So I will advise, as soon as you have your phone charged, 100% you disconnect and see how long it takes you. Okay, so what help us, the device that help us in doing that job accurately, okay, in helping to charge our phone and several other, it has other functions. I'm just trying to restrict everything about capacitor to this particular charging aspect, okay, because I believe it is something, at least one in every home, you will see like out of every five, you will see four with phone, depending on the age anyway. Okay, so that is about capacitor. And the things that Jamb is expecting you to know, under this topic, capacitor will be highlighted and treated accordingly. Let's see those things. That we should know the function of capacitor. We should know the symbol of capacitor. Okay, so we should know the function of capacitor, number one. Then two, we should know that parallel plate capacitor, that how does it look like symbolically? So we should try to ascertain that. Then capacitance of a capacitor. What do we mean by capacitance of a capacitor? We should equally look at that. Then we should equally look at the relationship between capacitance the area separation of plates and the medium between the plates. And in this case, let me be very clear with you here. So there is this particular relation, mathematical relationship that seems to capture everything that has to do with the factors affecting the capacitance of the capacitor. So in that formula, you will have the capacitance in itself, the separation area of the plate, and the medium between the plate, which is the dielectric medium they are talking about. So here is the mathematical formula that seems to summarize all the three factors that affect the capacitance of the capacitor. And if your mathematics is very good, you know physics and mathematics works in pari perso, okay? So if your mathematics is very good, this is one beautiful advantage that you will have over those whose mathematics are very weak or poor, okay? So because from this mathematical expression, I can easily simplify or explain convincingly how does capacitance of the capacitor will be affected. How will it be affected by the dielectric medium? You are seeing it from the formula, the one that is cycled. I am talking about this very one, okay? So how does it affect the dielectric medium of the material? How does it affect the cross-sectional area? So if the cross-sectional area of a given plate is increased, in which form or direction does it affect the capacitance of the capacitor? And finally, the separation distance. So like the mathematics I mentioned, there's a topic called variation specifically. So in that variation as a topic, you will have direct variation, indirect variation. So as for direct variation, these are quantities or the type of variation that if you have two quantities, okay, we believe that as one, the body of one, the body temperature of one of the quantities increases. We expect a corresponding increase in the body temperature of the second quantity. So if you have this type of relationship between two quantities, you call it direct relationship. So that is exactly what is playing out here. Because C, the capacitance of the capacitor, is seeing the dielectric medium. 
So which means increase in dielectric medium will lead to increase in the capacitance of capacitor. Please take note. Then the same C is C in A. Okay? So the cross-sectional area. So increase in the cross-sectional area leads to increase in the capacitance of the capacitor because there's a direct relationship between the two quantities. Okay? So and finally, C is not saying D directly. Rather, there is an inverse relationship between C and D. So inverse relationship implies that as, the, as one of the quantities increases, we expect the other one to decrease correspondingly, okay, or simultaneously. So you take note of this. I think with this, I have succeeded in explaining how the three things, the dielectric medium, the cross-sectional area, and the separation distance, okay, between the parallel plate affect the capacitance of the capacitor. Then energy store in a capacitor, yes, you know, it helps in charging our, our phones, that it helps in storing charges. So how does capacitor do the job of storing charge or energy? So we'll see all of that, okay? And I think the next thing is the past question paper from JAM. So these are the things JAM is expecting you to know in summary. So, yes, capacitor in itself, how does it look like? That it is a two parallel plate separated by a short distance called the separation distance, okay? But the two plates must be parallel plates like this. This is the symbol of capacitor. Okay, so you should be able to draw this. It is not a case at all. That it can be defined as a device. We have explained this earlier, don't forget. But then we need to take note of the key point here. It can be defined, that capacitor can be defined as a device for storing electric charge in a simple term, okay? It is represented diagrammatically as follows. You can see that I want to believe. Capacitance. Next, capacitance of a capacitor. That the capacitance of a capacitor, look at from this mathematical relationship. That says what? K O equals to CV. So where K O is the charge. Measured in column. Then V is the potential difference. Then difference measured in volts. Then C is the capacitance of the capacitor. Measured in farad. So from this mathematical relationship, C becomes C becomes K O over V. So with me, I can now define capacitance of the capacitor as the capacitance of a capacitor can be defined. as the quantity of charge the quantity of charge flows in a cycle per unit volt that is all so please, you don't need to cram the definition of capacitance of capacitor as it is. All you need to know is the relation, the mathematical relationship, K O equals to C V, from which C, the one that we are calling capacitance of capacitor, becomes K O over V. The K O stands for the quantity of charge flows, and V stands for the potential difference, okay, in the cycle. So the division between the two gives what is called capacitance. That is all. So please, although I have said here that the Capacitance of capacitors is measured in farad. There are other units of capacitance of a capacitor. Look at them. 
So capacitance of the capacitor from can be measured capacitance of a capacitor can be measured in one one microfarad in microfarad which is one microfarad which is equivalent to 10 to the power minus 6 farad if you see it as 2 microfarad 10 microfarad it is your duty to get it converted to the right unit which is farad okay so it can be in nanofarad which is nf it will be 10 to the power minus 9 10 to the power minus 9 f Okay, 10 for minus 9F. Then it could also be the third one. It could also be picofarad. That is PF. You have 10 for minus 12 farad. You take me. All of these, we have the two of them here. One microfarad, 10 for minus 6. But the one that is commonly in use is the first one, which is one microfarad. Okay, so as for this level, but as you go higher, in your academic career, like maybe 100 level university program, HND, and all of that. So, other units will now come into play. But it is good you take notes of the other unit of capacitance for capacitor. Now, very quickly, we have factors affecting capacitance for capacitor. You know, this we have explained from the beginning of this class that from this mathematical relationship, From this relationship, C equals to dielectric medium A divided by D, this one. So C is capacitance of capacitor. E, the one that seems to be E, is, call it epsilon, okay, or permittivity of a material. Now, the product of the dielectric medium or dielectric medium is still the same thing. Dielectric medium, um, dielectric material, all of that, it is still the same parameter I'm referring to. So the product of the dielectric medium and that of the cross-sectional area divided by the cross-sectional separation distance gives nothing but the capacitance of the capacitor. Please take note. And from this, all the three factors affecting capacitance of the capacitor seems to be encapsulated. Everything. One, you say separation distance. Two, you say cross-sectional area. Three, dielectric medium. That is all. Okay? So the only thing left for you to know or to say is if we are asked to explain, like those of you that will use this um, 321 material for work exam, because it is also good, okay? For work exam, for NECO exam, that I can be reading at home now using this same uh, means of reading. Everything is involved. So, which means you will have to write. But jam, you are not writing. It is about taking CBT stuff. That is the slight difference there. So, for you that will write, okay? That will use it for work or NECO. Look at it. So, you say C is looking at E. What do I mean? Looking, you know, it's an ordinary language. It is not a physics term, but this is the meaning. That C is directly proportional to E, dielectric medium. It is also directly proportional to A, the cross-sectional area. And when two, when two quantities are said to be directly related to each other, what that implies is increase in one will lead to increase in the other. Decrease in one will lead to decrease in the other. Hence the name direct relationship between the two quantities. That is all. So between C, and E, there's a direct relationship, which means, you know, increase in E, which is the electric medium, will lead to increase in the capacitance of the capacitor. So likewise, A, the cross-sectional area, increase in A will lead to increase in C, and the C is the capacitance of the capacitor. So, but increase in C or in D, because there is an inverse relationship between C and D. So increase in D will lead to decrease in C. Why? Because of the inverse relationship between capacitance of the capacitor and the separation distance between the parallel plate and that is all. So, but the three factors that affect capacitance of the capacitor, separation distance, cross-sectional area, dielectric substance. But I will have to say this, that dielectric substance can be expressed further as E0 times ER. This is another interesting relationship that I have seen jam questions centered around this small expression that you are seeing. So they will give you the the permittivity of free space, which is the E0, they can give you to be 3 
Okay, three. Farad per meter, or without unit, but ordinarily it should come with unit. That is the standard measure. But the ER, as an E subscript R, which is the, the one that I call relative permittivity of a material, relative, because of the word relative, it has no unit. Let's say it can be four or five again. So permittivity of free space is given to be two. The relative permittivity of a material is given to be four. Then they will ask you to find the dielectric medium, which is the E, the one that is outside. In such case, look at by this expression, you have to multiply the two things that are given. Two times four, you say eight, you get it. You just take your answer and go. This brings me to the end of this lesson. See you for its continuation in the next lesson. Thank you.